Our advertisers help sponsor our content so we can keep bringing it to you for free. Ads not read by me, Mary Payne, do not necessarily reflect the views of Pink Shade. If you prefer to hear the show completely ad-free, head on over to patreon.com slash pinkshademonkeys and subscribe. Hey y'all, welcome to Pink Shade. It's Tuesday. I'm here to talk about 90 Day the Other Way with Kimberly from A Date with Dateline, also known as Resident Yellow Jackets expert. Kimberly, I have been watching your lives, A Date with K&K on YouTube about Yellow Jackets. Thank you. You were making our comment section lit last night. Yes, I was eating those comments. (laughs) <laughs> that was good. Yeah, that was yeah. really good. Um, yeah, it was it was really fun. So many good theories in there, and then I came up with a theory that was quickly shot down. But I'm still I'm still sticking with it. I'm still sticking <laughs> that somehow Lottie and Thais are somehow sisters. Like they don't yeah. know like the dad or the mom had the affair with the other one, and that's why they both have these special powers. I love it. I'm the mm-hmm. wilder the theories, the better. I'm so excited. You guys, I was just on there like every time somebody would come in, I'm like, hmm, I didn't think about that. I didn't think about that. <laughs> it's really good. It's really, I'm really glad you guys are doing it because I feel like I know a lot. But then when I listen to you guys, I'm like, oh, I can't be a guest on this show. I know nothing. No, it's like yeah. the Redditors that do deep dives. And it's like, how much time do you guys have? Good for you. <laughs> I'm jealous, actually. Good for you. They're, they are the true citizen detectives that are figuring yeah. this stuff out. Yeah. And the whole, um, when you got to the end and you were, t- this is about episode two, guys. So if you haven't watched Yell Jockets episode two, just skip forward a little bit. When you guys were talking about Elijah Wood and the invisible ink and stuff, I was like, and you were like, I knew right away that was invisible ink. I was like, I would have never thought of that. I would have been like, oh, what a weirdo leaving me a blank note. <laughs> <laughs> I have invisible ink pens in my house. That's okay. That's York I am. Okay. I am a woman in my 40s who has invisible ink pens in her house. Do you and you have to shine a flashlight on it to see it, or she had a special it light? It comes with a pen with a, a light on it. It's I got them from Amazon. You can write and then you click on the light and see what you wrote. It's like good for passing notes and stuff like that. Why do I have it? Who am I passing notes to? I live I, alone. I don't I, work I, in an office. No <laughs> idea. So I can like hold up a bank and I can just write a note and the lady will be like, I don't, what am I supposed to do with this? And then I'll shine the light and she'll be like, oh, give me all your money. Okay. But then like, what if you sent one to me and then I didn't have the light? I'd be like, Kimberly's lost her mind. She's sending me blank pieces of paper now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, would you still not get it after this conversation? It might take me a beat. I'm going to be honest. (laughs) I'm going to be honest. It might take me a beat. I um let me tell you what I did today. So I'm um still at the beach, but when this comes out on Tuesday, we will have left the beach and we'll be heading on our college tour uh extravaganza. And but at the beach today, so it's been too super cloudy and everything today. And we only had one day where it was actually like halfway sunny. But it's fine because you're still here. You still get to look at the ocean and look at alligators and yeah. stuff, which is all, all I want to do in my life. And so I went with John, uh, my son on the golf course. He paid 18 holes. Now, I've only been allowed to go on the golf course one at a time, and I only got to go two holes. Um, but I got 18 holes, and we saw alligators. Allowed? By whom? Well, by the people playing the golf. Because the golf carts <laughs> will only – when you're actually golfing, the golf carts only seat two people. So I'm always like, I'll just stand on the back of the golf cart. And they're like, no, you won't, weirdo. So it's always two people playing golf, so I never get to go. Um, gotcha. but because my husband has had this neck surgery, he can't play golf. So John's playing by himself. So I got to go, I was allowed to go and we had the best time. It was so much fun because I don't know anything about golf. So I'm mm-hmm. like, that was a great hit. He's like, mom, that ball literally went in the water. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> I didn't see that look good to me. <laughs> and then he's like, if you remind me one more time, how good you are at we golf. Cause I'm always like, remember how good I am at we golf. <laughs> He's like, it's just not the same. Um, But we did see two alligators. We saw a regular size alligator that was swimming. And then we saw what we call the big one. Well, there's more than one big one, but big, like 12 feet, like big. Wow. Like the size of his head is probably the size of like my torso, like huge. Mm. Um, And we did see that guy and he was just, you know, laying on the side like he does. Like can't be bothered. Can't be bothered with people walking around playing golf. Just can't be bothered. 
it's the joy of my life. Okay. So yeah, we saw some deer. Um, we just, you know, we're really back to nature when we come over here. This is amazing. Do alligator yeah. go after deer? Oh yeah. That's their favorite kind of snack. Really? Yeah. Yeah. There is a video that's on the YouTube no, um, I don't that, know. I, that I've never seen because, but it happened here and it was just, somebody was playing golf. It was like taking a video they could see like an alligator, you know, and so you see when you get your thing out and you video it and it jumped straight out of the water and took a deer down. <gasps> and it's, and it's, a um, there's a video of it, but I've never sought it out, but I've been told yeah. it's easy to find. Yeah. I but yeah, can't. you see them all the time. The alligators floating around like right, right under where the birds are in the low trees and stuff, but they don't jump up to get them or anything. And the birds don't move. So I'm like, hmm. my husband's like, I think they're patient hunters. Yeah. Like, well, they would, you know, I was like, I wonder. They yeah. get under there real slow mm-hmm. and they just sit there for a while. Oh, like, Mother Nature is brutal. It makes me yeah. so upset. I can't watch those shows. Yeah. I it's, cry. Um, but then if well, it, and I always root for the prey, but then if it mm-hmm. were the alligator being hunted by man or something, I would be like, no, leave the alligator alone. We're in his place. Like this is, this is the alligator's island. Yeah. So there are some places here where they have lookouts where you can go and like look and, you know, safely. And then there's just the golf course where they're just walking yeah, around there, freely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, it was really fun. It was really fun. I drank one, um, truly spiked seltzer and I felt real crazy. <laughs> felt, felt real wild <laughs> in the middle of the day in the middle of the day yeah it was like wild. three o'clock and the cart girl came by and she goes oh we have this we have that and um I was like "Ooh, I'll take one of those my son's like get crunk mom I was like I'm having one <laughs> yeah so it's been nice it's nice just to get here and oh and for those of you um who haven't seen I did I may I should have said this up six minutes ago probably and we did make an announcement about the future of the podcast and what's going on and you can check out that announcement it's on pinkshadepodcast.com or you can go to our Instagram at pinkshadepod probably on Twitter as well I don't know what happens on Twitter um, but I guess it's there too. One feeds to the other. Um, also, the announcements on Patreon and all that. And I appreciate all the nice, supportive, sweet comments I've been getting. Like I told Keisha yesterday, I'd say you know we're we're at about ninety six percent rate of nice. Mm-hmm. So that's good. You, I can't, agree. you can't beat it. You can't beat it. I read it. every single one, and I liked the ones I liked the most. I gave him a little heart. Uh, so if I didn't yeah. like your comment, t- don't take it personally. It just didn't <laughs> move me to click the heart button. Your comment was, yo no soy Warren Buffett, but I think you're going to make it work. Is that what you said? (laughs) I don't know where I was going with that. It was what Danielle said. That one, I don't know. And then I did see one comment that was like, I'm going to need some new guest hosts. They never have hot takes. And I wrote, I'm sorry, I'll try to do better. You know, whenever anybody, you know, I've I've learned. I've learned this from like um, Andy Cohen says this a lot and Jeff Lewis says this a lot. I'm not comparing myself to them. I'm just saying these are people that I've listened to that say that very rarely do they you know respond when people say negative things. But um, and Kate Casey told me this one time as well that if you do respond to somebody with a negative comment, then that makes then immediately they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I love you. You're uh-huh. like, well, I don't think you do. They don't realize that <laughs> there's a person that could read that. Yeah, it's a public and- comment. Yeah, yeah. It's like fine. To- I'm going to do better with my hot takes. You guys, you know what? I'm rooting for Mahmoud. That's a hot take. That is a hot take. Uh-huh. Wow, wow. Mm-hmm. Well, let's let's really quickly, let's talk about your Yellow Jackets Live that you've been doing with Katie because I'm so obsessed with it. Um, so you're watching the episode one time. Or are you watching it three times and then going to Reddit? How are you getting all of this like super, super detailed information? Um, I, it comes out, it streams on Friday and we've decided thankfully to not do our live streams until after it airs on cable on Sunday Mm -hmm. nights so that everyone will have had a chance to see it. But that gives me a couple extra days to watch it again, to grab screenshots that we can discuss, to read any conspiracy theories that people send me. I don't go Mm -hmm. on to Reddit for that. People send them to me, but Katie does some deep dives on Reddit. Okay. Um, and then another hot take that you came up with last night was maybe Reddit means like I read it on Reddit. Yeah, doesn't it? I don't know. I never thought of that before. <laughs> Let's don't get ourselves in trouble about, oh, well, we also got a review that we were um, dumb because we didn't know basic geography. 
Well, so, that's valid. That's fine. I mean, that's, that's, yeah. we, we agreed with that and we said it as we were talking, we are dumb and don't know basic geography. But we're also, girl. does everyone that's listening know everything all the time? That's the impression that you guys give me when you correct me, that you guys know everything all the time. You know all the facts about everything. And I don't believe you. I think you forget <laughs> things too. I, <laughs> sometime I'm driving in my car and I'll be listening to a podcast like Bitch Sesh or something and they will like not be able to come up with somebody's name that's a yeah. character from like season three of Vanderpump Rules. And I'm like, her name was Vale. Oh my God, her name yes. was Vale. Oh my God, her name was Laura Lee. Now, normal people wouldn't know that information or people right. that haven't obsessively watched a show like that. But I do. But I don't, I don't take to the, I don't take to the Twitter or the reviews to let them know that they're stupid. Yeah. I had a teacher once who was like, I'm a teacher and I can't listen to these girls. Oh my God. Good grief. They don't know anything. And I was like, you sound like a horrible teacher because oh. you're not nice. <laughs> Kimberly. <laughs> All right. We're going to get ourselves in trouble. Well, I will say that I'm loving watching Yellow Jackets episode by episode. I'm glad they didn't put out like five at a time and stress me out. It really brings it back to community <laughs> because mm -hmm. Bing, I don't feel like is congru with congru. Okay. See, now I'm going to get my self in trouble again. Okay. With it doesn't go hand in hand with community because everyone's binging at a different time, and then you feel mm -hmm. judgment if you're way behind because you had something to you had a bat mitzvah that weekend. So now you're sure. behind on Tiger King, and everyone is yelling at you. But this is really <laughs> sounds real all, specific. America <laughs> can get together and watch week by week cannibals and feel yeah. good. Yeah. I told Keisha about Yellow Jackets yesterday. She's like, what's that show? I was like, oh my gosh. Where have you been? Keisha. She, but she loves stuff like that. She loves stuff that's a little bit scary and yeah. maybe oh, got some paranoia, paranormal, paranormal oh, yeah. in it. So she's Perfect gonna love it. Her. Oh, what will happen? And the people on the um on the thread last night were like, How many seasons will there be? I was like, Do Katie and Kimberly know that information? I'd be very no, impressed if you did. Yeah. We know nothing. We know the, what the producers have said in videos, but that they haven't said anything. I hope it doesn't well, go on as long as Lost because Lost went on at least two seasons too long. And so, and I know you don't watch Lost. We've had this never. conversation before. Many times. I'm not going to do it either. How no. many times did I mention Lost in the live stream last night? Three, How many times four? in the co in the comments did I say, I'm really sick of hearing about Lost? <laughs> Mo <laughs> move on. <laughs> if you just want, could join the party, then you would understand. Well, I'm not going to. Never going to watch it's it. It's too late. Too, You're done. It's too yeah. late. I know there was a smoke monster and I know that there was somebody in a tower directing them and it was all fake or whatever happened. I don't know. That's, that's all I know. That's not lost. actually accurate, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think. Okay. Um, I will tell you that, so you've got, you and Katie both have little boards behind you that have like the red strings, like a murder board. And yeah. well, I don't know what happened to yours at the top, but it looks like um, <laughs> something happened at the top of your murder board. <laughs> well, I made it stupidly without looking at my camera on my computer at the time. Yeah, so uh -huh. I made it go really high, but I didn't realize how much white space there would be above my couch, like at, above right. my shoulders. I didn't think you'd be able to see that. I forgot how short I am and mm. that my torso does not go up that high. So I had to mm -hmm. move a lot of crazy red string wall from the top to the bottom. And that's why you only you are getting to see the unfiltered, uncropped view. So I like special. it. It looks like a it looks like a squirrel or something attached to the top of your. And I did board. leave it when the house cleaner that I had splurged on that I get like yes. three times a year came. I did leave it up. I didn't cover it up. I was like, "Be crazy, be proud, wave my yellow jackets freak flag," and she didn't <laughs> say anything. So she, she was telling all her friends about you, though. She definitely sure. took pictures when I went when I left. She took pictures <laughs> and sent them to people. I know she did. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, Kimberly was nice enough since I'm on uh, a little bit of a, a vacay, soon to be a college hunting trip. She was nice enough to volunteer to take the notes for me, which I was like, well, why don't you take half the notes? She was like, I'll just take all the notes. I was like, okay. It's hard for me to release uh, control of something and also hard for me to ask for and receive help. So I had to do all three of those things, but I'm so <laughs> freaking grateful because I would have been in the house all day and wouldn't have been able to play golf. I watch am exactly rather. the same way. So it was 
it was, and it, I offer too much, but I really did have the time to do it this week. So it was perfect. Um, but I'm, I'm the same so way. Happy. I don't receive help and I don't ask for help, but I was happy to do it. You've been working very hard on your own. Yes. And I will tell you that there were a couple of things that happened in this episode where I'm like, oh my gosh, I know in my mind, I'm like, I know Kimberly got that, but what if she didn't? Yeah, I'm a little nervous actually that I missed some stuff that because my mind was half Yellow Jackets, so Uh, oh, and half Dateline. So really, there's barely any room left for 90 Day. (laughs) I mean, Matt, that takes that's 100. percent So it's I'm out. Um, but I think I did okay. But please correct me if I missed something big, please. Okay, there's only a couple of big things, and it was all in the mock mood. Um, what's your nuts, Nicole? See, and I was like, oh my gosh. So that was so we can. That was wild. So we can, uh, we can, and it's not about the teeth either, although people are waiting for me to comment on that teeth situation. Yeah, I hadn't seen those teeth before. Yeah, it's I, I think we've met this brother before, but I had not seen those teeth before. Oh, I did. I, I clocked him right away. Uh, okay, yeah, you no, know, you're yeah. good at that. But uh, he's a so, sweet, he's a sweet guy. Very. Yeah. So this is episode 409. Is that how we do it? we're doing it? Or just nine? Maybe season four, episode nine. Sure. Okay. And the title is... <laughs> A beautiful thing is never perfect. And you know I had to do my Mary Payne job. Look it up. Okay. Okay. An Egyptian proverb, which I uh-huh. believe we've had in another Egyptian proverb. I think I last week was it yeah, yeah, last week was an Egyptian proverb. Yeah. Okay. And it just would well, you want to guess what it means? It's very this is the easiest one that I could have gotten. It's very straightforward. A beautiful thing is never perfect. I mean, that seems pretty straightforward. Yeah. Nothing in life is perfect. As hard as we may try, we will always make mistakes. We will fail before we succeed, and we will choose the wrong decision regularly, which I love. When my therapist told me that, I was just like, you will make mistakes. It's inevitable. Don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah. And then we have to say, who is that referring to? I mean, everybody, obviously, but I guess we're going to say it's Mahmoud Nicole. I don't I know. I think so. Yeah. And the brother. He admitted he had made some mistake yeah he was yeah. a drinker Ooh, crazy but first we go our favorites Dan- danielle 42 new york and johan 32 i always heard there's a 10-year age gap i don't know why i'm more concerned about their height difference he's yeah. from la romana dominican republic has she ever had a clean room on this show every time we see her now she's hoarder status but she says like she's just super type A and super clean, and I was like, I don't, that I didn't doesn't read get that at all. Mm-mm. No, um, and yeah. she's forgotten to turn in her license plates in New York, so she is now back in the DR with her license plates, and she wonders aloud on television, <laughs> do they even have mailboxes in the DR? I guess not. I guess everybody just is word of mouth. Hey, your electricity <laughs> bill is three, $300. Somebody just walks by and tells you. They yeah. don't mail it to you. They have no maybe system they have for that. Maybe they carrier pigeon still. I, maybe she can manifest a mailbox. She is so ignorant for someone who thinks she is so in touch with the world. She's just the worst. And I feel like it, enough time has passed since we forgot where Mount Everest was, where we can now safely make fun of her for this mailbox yes. comment. So too because we're a little bit a couple weeks out now so out. She people will have totally apartment. forgotten <laughs> they've forgotten we just keep bringing it up it's us that's right. Right. <laughs> so she <laughs> finds the apartment that johan picked out for her acceptable but she of course has complaints like the bed is too big yeah she so happy with anything well i guess so they, they come furnished i guess it came furnished and so I don't know. I mean, the bed's too big. I, I couldn't tell she was in one room, then she was in the other room. And then we open with the scene of like the clothes everywhere. And then the next scene, there's like two items on the bed. Yeah. What's happening? I don't know. Yeah. No, I no. The turning, answer is no. She's never happy. She's never happy though. She's turning one of the rooms into the bedroom or the her office. Uh-huh. Her Why does she need studio? the office? I don't, to do yoga? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. So she has recently become a practicer of the spiritual practice Aoife mm-hmm. and she gets readings from her advisor and I wished that these were readings like from a drag queen you know when they say <laughs> that like, would be better. I'm gonna read you for filth and I wish it was that kind of reading because she needs it <laughs> uh, we can do and that 
she we need Maddie and uh, Jake to do that. They yeah, would totally yeah. do it. So she's arranged for Johan to have a reading via Zoom. And she says she needs him to do this because they come from different value systems. I don't know what that means. Like he has a job. He has mm-hmm. a family. They both want children. He doesn't believe in murdering people. How do they come from different values? I mean, they may come from different core religions, but it doesn't seem like they come from different value systems. No. And so, but he's being a very good sport about the reading. And her spiritual advisor, Baba, says that Johan was born with a crown on his head, which is not the thing to say to Johan because he's going to hold that over his, he's going to bring that up like regularly. In right. It's like, I don't I believe one word. I don't believe one word that guy said, except for that crown part. That crown yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. And um, he has to be careful of his throat and eating fish bones because he could choke and of mushrooms. Now, I feel like this is just good life advice. And I would get a reading if it means my life will be prolonged. Like if I'm going to choke on mozzarella I want to know. I'm not going to yeah. give up pizza, but I would still like to be aware. Yeah, I I didn't quite understand this guru. And I'm like, how much are you paying the translator? How much are you paying the guru? Mm-hmm. It seemed a little shady culty to me. Like tea leaves. Maybe you imagine something in the tea leaves or it's like a Rorschach test. Tarot mm-hmm. cards, they at least have images and words on them. But this mm-hmm. guy was holding beads, like a, a just a, a string yeah. thing. With, and and somehow he got fish bones from that. And I don't know where that came from. I, I think it's just good advice not to choke on fish bones. But he also said, don't eat mushrooms. And, See, I, mean, and I don't. That, I'm terrified of mushrooms. So I felt that. Yeah, I just don't eat mushrooms because they're gross. But They're gross. Uh, but he may be a mushroom lover. Who knows? He may love truffle salt. I don't know. Yeah, what's Johan going to do if his, he's a pescatarian who loves mushrooms? He's out of luck. So, but I felt like Johan was very mature and respectful. Mm-hmm. He, I was expecting him to be rolling his eyes and making fun, and he did a pretty good job. And he said, yeah, Bob, after the call, he said, Bob is a good person. And, you know, I respect him. But, you know, it's okay if people have different religions. Mm-hmm. I pray to God, and my religion is in my heart. And Danielle is side eyeing him. She is so judgy for someone who just became Aoife, like in the last year. Yeah. It's like someone who just became keto and they're making fun of you for eating bread. And it's like, dude, you just became keto four months ago. Right. Take a seat. Right. It's like people that start to do CrossFit and are real mean because yes. you don't want to go flip tires in a parking yeah. lot. Yeah. And they act right. like CrossFit is their life, even though they just started. Right. And they're still in the intro class, but the intro (laughs) class has changed their life. And they think you are wasting your life because you're not CrossFitting. Uh, Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're looking at your CrossFit people. (laughs) They are. They are a cult. I think. Yeah. I think it might be a cult. So then the uh, light goes off in the apartment, which is perfect timing because they're having this conversation about God and the electricity goes off. And she says, God, that's God. Did you see when she said about the electricity, he looked right at the camera like, oh, fuck. <laughs> did he do like a gym from the office? <laughs> yes, he did. He looked right at the camera and looked back like, uh-oh. He her. forgot to pay and he didn't tell her that she was supposed to pay. He just didn't mention it. And she is so upset she needs to breathe for a second because her nerves, her annoyance level is on the wire of someone who is like working in like – airport traffic control, something like a really hot, <laughs> that's how, where her stress is, but she pretends she's so Zen, but like the second anything happens, she's ready to explode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're going to wind up on Dateline. Um, mm-hmm. Also, what if the power had gone off during the reading with Baba and he <gasps> hadn't gotten the warning about the fish and then he had had fish for dinner and choked? It, electricity saves lives. Uh, yes. So that's a great you point. You need that power. It's a great point. And then we see them driving in a car, and he's driving, and I did get a momentary flashback to Monique and Derek from Love After Lockup mm-hmm. because of the size difference. Yep. It's not just Monique and Derek. It's lots of people look that way. <laughs> it, like, they should be in a car seat in the car. And Derek <laughs> is one, and Danielle is also one. I don't think they can safely sit there with the airbag. Yeah, they need a phone book or something. Yeah. 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 So she's really excited for their one year one year anniversary. She feels like they have 
come so far and they have so much to celebrate. And literally the day before she hated him for not paying the electric bill and doesn't think they're on the same page and thinks he has bad values. But she now All thinks that. yeah. it's great. Yeah. And then they sit down and she immediately says, we have so much to celebrate in our one year anniversary, but what do you want to change about us? She's so, she's so insufferable. And it just gets worse in this scene that she's just so insufferable. Let's start a fight on our anniversary. That's yeah. Great. What don't you like about me? <laughs> tell <laughs> me, tell me, great, tell me, tell me, tell me so that then I can tell you what I don't like about you. Let's go. That's what she, <laughs> that's what she's waiting for. She can't yeah. wait to do it to him. So she's like, I just have to let him have one first. So mm. he says, the way you communicate is very angry. And you need to calm down. And she actually agrees. And if you're thinking, wow, she's really grown as a person. No, she only <laughs> agrees because she wants to tell him her thing, which is yeah. she doesn't like that he gets jealous when she has friends that are men. And totally by coincidence and not at all why she brought up this conversation, she has an ex-boyfriend who's coming to town and she wants to have lunch with him. And Johan does not feel like you should be friends with your exes. He doesn't believe men and women can be. He doesn't. He's not a When Harry Met Sally fan, and he doesn't want her to talk to her ex. And if he's not comfortable with it, she shouldn't do it. That's really the thing. Like, I'm not comfortable with it, so you should respect me enough to just not do it. And she says, in America, it's not that big of a deal. And it's really cultural differences, like usual, on the show. Mm-hmm. I think that if he decided he was going to hang out with an ex girlfriend mm-hmm. that used to live in the house with him, it seems like she was like roommates with this guy too. Mm-hmm. I don't think that would go over very well with Danielle. Mm-mm. She's I, totally I think, acting like she's cool with it, though. I, I don't be think able she to would go be. Guy friends, and you could totally go out with girlfriends. I don't mind. Sure, I'm sure she's just like go on Johan with your three girlfriends. Head out to the club. See you later. Yeah. I don't uh-huh. think so. Uh-uh. I don't think so. No. Yeah. Uh, so moving on to Mahmoud 30 from Cairo and Ooh. Nicole 38 from Los Angeles. And they are at the end, the tail, well, more like the middle of that fight at the hotel. And even though she had told him, leave me alone, she didn't expect him to actually leave her alone. And she feels very abandoned at this luxury hotel filled with tourists she, and a and a production crew and a yeah. production crew and there's like a child in like swimmies you yeah. know so she's fine but she's acting like he literally abandoned her on the side of the road right right meanwhile but she did tell him to leave more than once yes she, she, several times and she hit him but he deserved it it's fine well so he was, gra- he was he grabbing, was grabbing. The there was physical yeah. stuff on both sides physical stuff is never okay so no. meanwhile Mahmoud's brother what's the brother's name I did miss the brother's name. Is it, is it Ahmed? Is it Ahmed? Ahmed. Yeah. I think that's right. He hears what happened and is furious at Mahmoud for leaving Nicole there. So he comes to talk to her. And the brother Ahmed says, Nicole, I came for you. You are my sister. We are family now. Let me help you. And I want to fix things to make you happy. Not to make Mahmoud happy, my dumb dumb brother, (laughs) stupid, stupid guy. It's very sweet. And he's like, you are what's important here. Let's work this out for you. And the brother explains that it took him and his wife, who is from China, over a year to figure this stuff out. And Mahmoud is a good guy, but his mind might be a little small. That's what I was hoping that you caught, that he said he is basically, he's a simpleton. He's a simpleton. simpleton. He is the simpleton of our village. And we all have to look out for him. And it's a miracle he found a wife. And now we have to help him know how to be around women because he has no idea because he's a dum-dum. Yeah. It's like he has never, he says he's never had a girlfriend, never been around a woman, doesn't know how to act. He's a simpleton. He's the village idiot, literally. So Literally. here I am, here I am to say the nods. Day. She doesn't say like, oh, that's not nice or ha ha. She literally nods like it's a fact. Like, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Okay, mm-hmm. go on. Uh, so the brother, I feel like at this point is doing good and he needs to mediate all of their conversations. Like yes. he needs to join the relationship as like a non-sexual thruple part because they just sh- <laughs> they shouldn't be allowed to communicate without the brother there. It needs to I be mean, some sort of court ordinance. Even when he 
walks away for four seconds. Four they kick seconds, it right back. They kick it, it right back off. It falls to crap. So he says, in Islam, the woman is the queen at home. And that's what my brother's not understanding. And he brings Mahmoud over and, and he's like, sit down. And Mahmoud just sits there. And the brother then realized he's actually dealing with the remedial husband class. Like that he's teaching at the Y. And yeah. he's like, oh, I thought this was the advanced class. This is remedial class. Say hi to your wife, stupid guy. And he smacks Mahmoud on the head. Yeah, he keeps calling him stupid guy. Don't listen to this guy. He's so stupid. This stupid guy. Yeah, I loved this it. This stupid it so guy. Funny. Say hi to your wife. <laughs> and so Mahmoud is like, Hi. And the brother makes him apologize. And then Nicole apologizes for pushing Mahmoud. And the brother feels like this is going great. I can step away now with the final parting words. Don't make your wife sad. That's literally all you have to do. Don't make your wife sad, which is great advice. He walks away and he thinks they're going to be fine. I've done my job. I'm going to order an iced tea. Then the second he steps away, Nicole and Mahmoud start arguing about her clothes. It's always about the clothes. And it, like he said at the end of this conversation, it's never going to be resolved. And she said, I'd like to pack my bags, go back to the United States. And I thought, well, thank God. Now two people are on the same page and thinking clearly. But no. No. And the brother's watching from the other table the whole time. This are fight. He's like, it's like um, if you're in a dating school, I think these things happen and you have like a dating a guy who evaluates your dates or a lady. So she's watching. And then afterwards she'll come over and be like, it's great that you held out her chair for her. But when you ate your steak with your fingers, that really turned her <laughs> off. So we're going to do better next time. <laughs> like Stacy's Darcy's matchmaker. Like, yes. Like yeah. you can't wear that outfit, but you can wear that outfit. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So he's watching and he is like, the, so Mahmoud basically says, I'm never going to change my mind about the clothes. Nicole says, well, neither am I. We're, we're at an impasse. What are we going to do? I might as well leave. And he says, fine. And she says, okay, I'm going to get my stuff. Go to the airport. We're all happy. They're finally going to get a divorce. Let's do this. But then the yeah. brother comes over and I was really rooting for the brother. But now the brother comes over and he has to fix things again. And he says, yeah. stupid, you stupid, two little kids. I left, <laughs> like, I left you alone for two seconds in the ball pit at McDonald's and you pooped in there and you pulled your, brother, your brother's hair. Oh, and, no. You know, it's yeah. like they're, they're children and he's so frustrated. And I kind of wish he had just left it alone at this time and been like, they're not they're maybe not meant to be. I, I Yeah, 100%. And I am interested in the fact that he kept talking about his wife and going to China and stuff. I was like, did he, he must have lived in China or met her in China? Because he's obviously been there more than once yeah, and when times. he was single and stuff. Yeah. yeah that's, that's interesting. Yeah. I thought I would love to have seen more about them. They're more likable to be on the show. They should be the couple we're following and not For Martin sure. And Nicole. For sure. Um, sure. so they're arguing and, you know, the brother is saying, Mahmoud, say sorry to your queen. You know, she doesn't have to say sorry to you because she's the queen. You have to say sorry. And, um, I just feel like if they wind up on Dateline, it's kind of the brother's fault because she was leaving and yeah. he stopped it. So now the next day they're all going on a double date, the brother and his wife and Nicole and Mahmoud, and they play backgammon and Nicole says, we haven't fought today. So that's good. And then she says, we haven't really spoken either. <laughs> so <laughs> they haven't had a chance to fight. Yeah. That's also good. And the brother says, we used to fight all the time, but now we are so happy. And Nicole asks about the clothes. And his, the brother's wife admits that she hates the hijab, the hijab. She hates it. I love it. She was like, I wear it, but I hate it. Yeah. And uh, but she's she's compromised. She's wearing it. She but she also thinks it's hot and she doesn't like it. And but her Nicole hair is showing. You know what I mean? She she is wearing it in her own way mm -hmm. because the front of her hair is showing, but she's just got the rest of it covered. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. compromised. Yeah. Yeah. Nicole says, well, I love to have beer sometimes like with my dad, but Mahmoud doesn't want me to drink. And the brother says, I used to drink when I would go visit my, you know, future wife in China and Mahmoud is scandalized he's like 
bad boy, brother, I thought I knew you. Who are you? You're dead to me now. I'm going to tell mom. And the brother's yeah. like, oh, again, trouble. Don't say anything. And Nicole says, see, even your brother has broken the rules sometime. And the brother says, you know, mus being Muslim is not about being perfect. It's about just being better and improving. Mm -hmm. And Mahmoud says, oh, you're right. Only God is perfect. And Aha. So that's where our quote comes from. I think that's our quote. Yes. Yeah. And they agree that basically they started off the relationship wrong. They started way too fast. And she said yes to things she shouldn't have. And they need to start over. And they're going to try to just relax. I don't know if she's able to relax. I've never seen no. her relaxed. Mm -mm. No. She's the most tightly wound person I've ever seen. Well, I just think the two of them are such a mismatch. There's no, you can't even like envision a time where they had a conversation that was nice normal. to one another. Uh, like just a normal like, yeah. hey, what do you want for lunch? I was thinking yeah. of this. Like just a normal conversation between two people. You can't even see that because they, yeah. they can't even get through two sentences without mm -mm. kicking off about the clothes. And it's all that fake. Whenever they are nice, it's that fake niceness that is just creepy and oh, there's okay, hatred honey, under okay. the surface. Okay, my love. Okay, okay baby. My love. I love you, baby. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So moving on to a couple that we actually love. Gabe, 32, from Margate, yes. Florida, and Isabel from Medellin? Medellin? Medellin. Colombia. Medellin. Medellin. Med I can't. And Narcos, he says, Medellin. Med <laughs> so this. My, um, that was my, what's his name? And Narcos? I didn't watch it. Is that <sighs> one that I should add to my list? Oh my gosh, Narcos is so good. It's about Pablo Escobar. Thank you. It took me a second. Pa it's about Pablo Escobar. It's mm -hmm. really good. Yeah. Kingpin. I've you mentioned it before. I might have to. But I also yeah, really have The good. Wire that I've never done. Breaking Bad yeah. I've never done. I've never so. watched The Wire, but I have watched Breaking Bad, the whole thing, and and the follow-up, Better Call Saul, all the seasons, and the Breaking Bad movies, everything. I'm an wow. expert on Breaking Bad. It is must-see TV. Okay, I've heard so that. Good. I know. I know I'm missing out. Uh, so Gabe and Isabel are the couple that we've been waiting for, and I thought they were going to be nice and have a, open the episode with them. Mm -hmm. But no. 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 They left us on a huge cliffhanger, and they finally are getting to them. He has just said he's trans to her parents, and they're just making surprise faces, and he's smiling so hopefully and nervously. Yes, so yes. Sweet. And he says, what would you like to know? And the dad says the whole story with more details. And Isabel's just saying nothing. She's so terrified. I wish Mute. she would have said like a little bit more, like, but she's fine. Yeah. She I wish she would have even said like, you know, mom and dad, Gabe is open to tell you anything you want to know. And we, yeah. you know, we, we want you to know that. He'll tell you anything, but she just says she is completely mute. She is letting him take the whole thing over. It's yeah. nerve wracking. Yeah. At one point she nods like very supportively. But it's almost like she had said, this is Gabe's thing. I'm going to let him do it. Yeah. So yeah. Gabe says, I always knew that I wasn't a woman and I want you to see who I really am. And the dad says, you've left me speechless. And the, Gabe says, what about you to the mom? And the mom says, I'm also speechless. They're just speechless. But then the mom says, I admire people who are honest. And we didn't know the Gabe from before. We know this Gabe. And this Gabe is a great friend and we like this Gabe. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, I've had bad experiences when people took back all the love they gave me when they found out, which is heartbreaking. Sad. And the mom says, you know, I feel for someone what's on the inside and not on the outside. That's what I care about. And Gabe is just grinning. He's so happy. And then the dad, the dad says, this isn't easy news to hear, but I think that with time, I hope you can explain it to me more because I would like to understand it and I have another perspective and mm -hmm. this won't change my feelings towards you. And he says, we're not perfect. There are decisions that we make that affect our lives. And I was like, uh, and then he says, and there are other things that aren't our choice. And I was like, oh, he, I think he gets it. I think he gets it. I, I hope he, he gets, gets it. it. Yeah. And and he says God taught us not to judge anyone, only God can judge. Gabe, you're welcome in my home anytime. And they hug oh, and I cry. So I'm so happy and oh. Isabel's crying. She's so proud of her parents for being so accepting. She feels so lucky to have this supportive family because not everyone yeah. has that. 
And the four of them put their hands in the middle of the table like they're going to chant, like, go trance or something. It was very <laughs> yes, cute. it was like, team Gabe. Yeah. yeah. Like, What's going to happen here? Yeah, they all put their hands. You know, they've yeah. had that Colombian coffee. They're all like wired out their what? asses. Yeah. <laughs> I was just so happy. These parents are such good examples of good Christians. And yes. Christians get a bad rap nowadays because there are so many trying to take away people's rights and act unchristianly and unjesusly, yes. and they pick guns over their kids. Sorry, I'm getting political. And yeah. and on Dateline, I really get jaded against cr- Christians because Dateline always picks the pastors that are murdering their wives because yes. they want to bang their new hottie at the church. And that, like, that happens a lot. Yeah. That happens mm-hmm. a, surprisingly a lot on Dateline. So yeah. you get a little jaded, but they have restored my faith in good Christians. They are, they are walking the walk, talking the talk. They are, yeah. you know, claiming to be, you know, people of God and very religious. And they said exactly right. Mm-hmm. Only only God can judge us. So who are we to judge him? And we we go by what's on the inside. And you, mm-hmm. you they know that Gabe is a good person. So it shouldn't matter. And I was very surprised at how quickly they came to this and how mm-hmm. immediately they didn't say, well, we really have to think about this and we don't know what we think. I don't know. I was very happy with the whole thing. Yeah. Very yeah. happy with the whole thing. Good yeah. Couple minutes and they warmed were, my heart. Yeah. But then the next day. Gabe mm. can't seem to let a good thing lie. And he's he was up all night wondering, do they really accept me? You know, I've never had religious people accept me. And this was almost too easy. What, they were so nice. But like, why were they so nice? Like, mm-hmm. there's, he's very suspicious. And I was like, Gabe, you're looking a trans gift horse in the mouth. You need to just yes. let it go. Yes. Um, he wants to talk to the mom again, find out where she's really at. But first he's going to take Isabel's kids to a, like a color me mine type place. Yeah. Yeah. To, to do pa- painter pottery. Painter yeah. pottery. Yeah. yeah. And, um, they have a very, they're just so sweet. They love him so much and they're so excited. He's there and he tells them he wants to propose to their mom and do they approve? And they're mm. like, yes, of course. And he's, he shows them the ring and he's going to do it at the pottery place. He's like, has a little thing that's going to say, will you marry me? And so it's going to be very cute when that happens. But he's going to do it at the pottery place? I think that's what he said. Yeah. He's going to bring her back to the pottery place. That's weird. Okay. I yeah, thought it, was making, it looked like he was making like a little butter dish. He lifted it off. Yes. yes. <laughs> Surprise. It's not butter. It's, it's a ring. It's not butter. <laughs> I'd be like sad. Where's my butter? <laughs> but do I Have still I, get butter? Yeah. Do I still get the – because I have this roll here and I can't eat it with nothing better. I need the um, The ring is nice. but So the mom and Isabel have a chat and they're discussing that the dad still has things he wants to talk about with Gabe. And that makes Isabel really worried. And the mom says she respects what Gabe did, but she's still processing. So it does seem like they haven't had a change of heart, we don't think, but they – new things might have come up as they were processing. Yeah. I sh- it's, um, Isabel says, what if we were to get married or something? And I was like, well, what's the, or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's, what if- it's, well, maybe we got married or something like that. It like, feels <laughs> like they've already discussed it. Like he basically said, who are you looking for to marry your daughter? Yeah. Oh, it seems like yeah. it was fairly out in the open, but now the mom says you should wait. It's and yeah. so maybe Gabe wasn't overreacting and he had every right to be cautious. Maybe he's been down this road before with people that he, that he feels are overly religious at first saying, okay, but then thinking about it and then not being okay. So maybe he's had this experience before. Yeah. Yeah. But I need this to go well as well for my own (laughs) mental health. Um, I need everything to stay status quo, just like it is. Yeah. Yeah. So we're all rooting for these parents and we need it to go well. Um, Back to a couple that you're rooting for, Jen and Rishi, I think. Oh, yeah. But, you know, I just remembered the other thing that I was hoping that you clocked that I forgot. When Nicole and Mahmoud, when she was left at the hotel and she was saying, she was like, you know, this is so annoying. Like, I can't believe he left me here. I mean, I know I told him to leave me here, (laughs) but I... But I still can't believe he just left me here alone in this like weird country where I don't speak the language. She said this weird country where I don't weird speak the language. Country. This is your home. Classic. This is where you, 
she moved there. Oh. Yeah, she was like like this whatever this like weird country where I don't speak the language. Also, like, oh she's God, from she's Los Angeles, which is very weird in its, it's own a way. Very yes. Um, okay, so so sorry that was a complete uh, callback to ten minutes ago. But I yes, I am rooting. I am rooting for Jenny Rishi. I am. Yeah. You're still I believe for them. I believe in their love. I do. Okay. Yeah, I do. I, mm-hmm. I love that about you. Mm-hmm. So she's back in the States on her family farm and we're seeing snow melting and flowers growing in time lapse. So she's been there for a while. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they just didn't put on the screen four months later. So we would know. <laughs> but More that's dramatic. Fine. Uh, and she's spraying for bugs and the, the spray drips all over her and mm-hmm. I died. I can't. She's trying to get, do it like a wasp nest. A wasp She's got nest. like a and then it drips spray, on her yeah. skin and her dress. I yeah. when I spray raid, I leave the house for like eight hours because I'm so scared of inhaling the fumes. Yeah, she's spraying it straight up and, and not at an angle. Almost she's like right under mouth. it. Yes, yeah, like girl, step back a little bit. Yeah, no. So then she zooms her judgmental friends, who one of them is friends with the guy you know. John, she took John Hill's virginity. Yes, her name is Randy. Yeah, she took John Hill's virginity. <laughs> yeah. And she tells them they've reinstated my 10 year visa. I'm going back to India. I'm going to see if Rishi is really loyal to me, if this thing, rock on my finger is legitimate, means something, and we're going to get yeah. married. And he's going to finally tell his family. And she looks so she, great in this scene, by the way. Something about her hair wasn't so streaky or something. She looked really good. Did you think her she has darkened her hair during her talking head interviews? Because her in her talking head, it looks like she's darkened it, but she still has the streak. But yeah, I, I don't like the streak. I feel bad saying that. I the think streak is a thing. It's a young person's thing. A lot of like my son's girlfriend has that streak, and that's that's a lot of what the young girls do. They do that streak in the front, like super light. I think her fe- facial features are very like severe and yes. I think she's beautiful. She's what you would call like a classically handsome woman. She has mm-hmm. the like the the cheekbones for days and the like, you know, she she has these strong features, so yeah. I feel like the streak is like a little harsh. But it's, it's a little fine. harsh. Whatever she does, it's fine. You do you, Jen. Yeah. So, but thank you for educating me that it is a young person thing. Yeah, and she's not a young person, so I don't know what no, she's thinking, but, but go ahead. Yeah. So she says to her friends, you know, Rishi has never given me any reason not to trust him. And the friend is like, yes, I've been waiting for that lead in so I can yeah. do my line now. Um, Jen, he sent me a photo of himself with no shirt. And we find out she he sent this photo before Jen went to India last time. And the friend didn't tell her because no. – the friend said, well, you're just going to do what you want to do, and I give you advice, and you never listen to it. So why are you even telling her now, then? Maybe I think she's going back to India? Yeah, but I mean, last time she hadn't left yet, she could have told her, she so I don't told know. Her. Yeah. So Rishi sent this photo with a towel around his waist, so low that you can see those muscles, the penis ravine, as Kate called it from below deck, and yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. it's pretty revealing and Jen it's, it's said, obviously a modeling photo it's not something he took in his bathroom it's lit no perfectly. it is perfect yeah. lighting and yeah. yeah it's like a men's health magazine type photo totally but it is a little risque to send to someone in a dm it does that feel. you don't know yes yeah yes so mm-hmm. jen says are you freaking kidding me dude <laughs> she and debbie should be friends they both love the dude Dude, uh, come geez. on, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, Osama, man. What are you doing? <laughs> so she's disgusted. And the friend says, I told him I was a model and I was going to be in Jaipur and he agreed to meet up with me. And we were in the process of making plans to meet up. And then he kind of realized he got on to me of who he made me, so to speak. And <laughs> I think that's the right term from like, I've been made, I've been made. I've been made. <laughs> and he blocked her. So he for sure found out something because why else would he block her? Well, he just looked, do we have any mutual friends? Oh, mutual? look, here's Jen. <laughs> I know. I thought it was a totally fake profile, but did she use her own profile to do this? I don't know. Randy's doesn't have any game, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> What so, about Myra? Myra's just sitting there the whole time listening, like 
Mm, mm, He's not as trustworthy as you think he is. (laughs) She just chimes in occasionally, but most of the time she's just sitting there. So she feels like, Jen feels like she's put in too much time. She's in too deep in this relationship. She can't just end it over this photo and she's still going to go to India. She's going to ask him about the photo, but she's still going to go. And so then we cut to India and he's dancing with this lady friend of his. And I guess he has a platonic girlfriend, which I didn't know he had platonic girlfriends. And he's they're dancing, doing this choreography because she's a dance teacher. Danielle would be fine with it. Danielle has no problem if you hang out with girls all night long. That's fine. She's fine with it. She's so yeah, cool. She's because she's Ooh. Zen. Um, yeah. she's Aoife. So the friend doesn't believe Rishi when he says, I'm marrying Jen. And she says, I don't believe you. Do you know what real love is? And she <laughs> thinks he's like a just a man, just an F boy, basically. And mm-hmm. she's yeah, she's like, I don't think you even know what real love is. And if you really loved her, you would have told your parents by now. She's given up everything to come here. Mm-hmm. She's fully team Jen in this yeah. relationship. I think and she's team I think she's team woman. I think she's team woman. Team I think she yeah, she's like any woman would want to be treated better than what you're doing. Yeah. Yes. And she says, "Have you ever cheated on her?" And Rishi pauses and says, "No." And she says, "I don't believe you." She says, "I was want- waiting. Weren't you waiting for him to go define cheating?" Yes. What do you mean? (laughs) Webster's Dictionary defines sexual intercourse as. Mm -hmm. So she says, we go out to the bars all the time. You'll be hanging out with a ton of girls, and then you will disappear for the rest of the night. Mm -hmm. Where are you going? Mm -hmm. You are totally cheating. He's like, no, I'm still, I'm I'm at the bar. I'm in the bathroom. I'm totally, I'm dancing. What, What do you mean? If that's happened more than once, where she's referring to it, it happens all the time. All the time? I was like. Well, yeah, he's cheating. He's cheating. So Jen is finally heading back to the airport and her judgy sister-in-law that is obsessed (laughs) with Jen's sex life is driving her. And so (laughs) literally they get in the car and the sister-in-law is like, so are you guys still going to do that abstinence thing? You're not going to have sex? Just Are you going to like call me and tell me about you guys banging? Like, I really want to know. I really want to know. Can we talk about that right now? And Jen, for some reason, tells judgy sister-in-law about the shirtless towel photo and the sister in law says, I need to see that photo right now. I'm pulling over. <laughs> Get the Wi Fi working. Let's go. She's I like an it. Amy Schumer special or some comedian who's totally obsessed with sex. She's like a horn dog. She just wants to know all the details. She's uh, like Char- she's like Charlene from MILF Manor. She's the yeah. hor- horniest of all the MILFs. Yeah. She, yes. Or like Samantha from Sex in the City. She's just yeah. ready. Let's do it. Let's talk. Or Chelsea from Love is Blind. Okay, see, I'm not getting at most of these references, but I'm going okay. with it. Okay, but, but yeah, Chelsea, she's the horniest of all the girls on Love is Blind. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So she says, why are you going to see him? This is too much. This Look at this photo. Why are you going? Look at the penis ravine. Why are you also, going back to India? can you send that to me so I can save it onto my phone? For no Thanks. reason. Just so I can <laughs> tell people how um, yeah. bad he is. Not so mm-hmm. I can have it in my Mm-mm. file. Um, she, then she gives good advice. She says, Jen, you just need to love yourself and have respect for yourself and everything will fall into place. And they get to the airport and Jen is like sobbing. It does not seem like she wants to go. She was happy the last time she went. Now she is like, what am I doing? Why am I yeah. doing this? It's just kind of sad. I think everybody on this show has that scene at one time, like, am I making a terrible mistake? Mm-hmm. What am I doing? I think even when Kenny was driving towards Armando, he was, yeah. even though he was, he was singing, he um, was dancing, he was dancing and singing in the car with Truffle. It wasn't that his dog's name. Truffles, Truffle. Yeah. yeah. Even though he was having the best time, I think even though he's like, what am I doing? Why am I driving yeah. to Mexico? What's happening? What am I, this yeah. is crazy. Uh, so then we have Jamie and Chris. Jamie's 30 from Bogota, Colombia. Chris is 40 from Haleyville, Alabama. And they are getting married already. I know what you're thinking. It's way too soon. This is only episode whatever, but it's happening. So it's been nine days. It's been nine days. How dare you? Nine whole days. (laughs) She has spent eight of them in bed with severe pain, but they are still going to get married. 
Uh huh. So they meet with Juanita, the wedding planner, who we never see or hear from again. Why did I mention her? I don't know. So <laughs> they have separate rooms to get ready separately because they're not going to see each other. And Jamie's best gaze come to do the hair and makeup. And mm -hmm. Because the show is rushing us through this season, I feel like, or rushing us through this couple, we get this flashback for two seconds where they met, they finally got to meet Chris, and she's wearing like a tank, strange tank top and a black leather newsboy cap. And she's she's in a Harley Davidson um, groupie outfit. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. But the hat's covering the greasy hair, which I like. And That's good. we assume they gave their approval but we don't get any shots of them like explaining what did they think about her well, it's I like the night before outfit. it's like the, this is the rehearsal dinner yeah this is her outfit like Basically, what's happening yeah what are you yeah. wearing and what did they think of it i want i want their take and we got nothing the show is just like i got to meet them last night it was great that's it and so, they're the only two attendees of the wedding basically and they're, yeah and they're working yeah <laughs> terrible <laughs> She has no other friends. No. So Chris's uh, dress is her mom's 50-year-old dress, which is mm -hmm. incredible. Um, mm -hmm. I thought it suited her very well. It's like lacy. I'm the wrong person to talk about fashion, but I thought it looked good on her. It definitely had an odor to it. Um, well, it smelled musty, for sure. Musty, mothball-y. Yeah. Um, it was interesting that she pulled that thing over her head that then made that train. <laughs> it was definitely like what you said a couple last week or maybe about her, Grandma Chic. She's Grandma Chic. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, yeah, the dress definitely smelled bad. Yeah. Um, but her hair and the head thing on her head looked really good, and her makeup looked good, too. And her hair looks clean. So yes, yes, huge step up. Mm -hmm. uh, and Chris, um, oh, Chris says this is different from other weddings because I forgot she had been married before. And two other times, yeah, two, two other, other times. times because she loves Jamie completely, and before she was marrying to please everyone else, and mm -hmm. now she's doing it for herself. Uh, meanwhile, Jamie's dress is white; it shows off her curves. It's like more modern. Yeah. Again, I'm the wrong person to talk about dresses, but they both look good. They're both yeah, wearing she looks great. dresses appropriate to their style. Yeah. Grandma chic yeah. and <laughs> of the 2000s. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Chris's family is watching on Zoom. Her daughter had been supposed to come, but they changed her exam schedule and she had like finals or something. So that's mm. – do we believe that? I think we believe that. You don't look like you believe that. I don't. I don't believe that. <laughs> I always when, believe. No, they don't change your exam schedule. You know that at the beginning of the semester, what your exam schedule is. Maybe Start it when it comes. Or a NATO warning or something, and they had to change it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, she Maybe didn't want to come. had that happen two days ago. She had a tornado warning. She had to not record she, or something. <laughs> no, she was go. Her niece was in a school play, and they had to push it a whole day. And people oh. were flying out for spring break. They were leaving. It was a huge uproar with all the parents because they had planned their schedules around it. But yes, it was a tornado warning. That's what happens in the South. It's tornadoes yeah. all the time. But lately, it's been pretty bad. So everybody, stay safe out there. Stay safe. Um. So ever we're seeing the family on Zoom. They look very happy. Um, thank you to Reality Gaze who posted on their Instagram. They noticed something I didn't, which is that Chris's mom is in her work cubicle. Work 100%. 100%. She was like, oh, it's, I'm going to have to, should I drive I home? No, I'll yes, just stay reports. here. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> She's she like, I mean, if I'm... Right. I guess I'll just wait. Yeah, she's got like two computers up. She's got one where she's yeah. watching the wedding. The other one she's inputting. She's inputting data on her computer. Yeah, yeah. someone's yeah, eating thing like I noticed tuna salad, salad yeah. like very smelly tuna salad in the cubicle next to her. Got that bad angle, like from the ground up, you know? Yeah. yeah she's hoping nobody notices she's watching a wedding while she's supposed to be working. <laughs> totally. <laughs> uh, so mm. the, interestingly. The officiant speaks in Spanish, and we think that's weird because Chris doesn't speak Spanish. Also, Chris, you couldn't have learned some Spanish Why you've been with her for like nine months at least. So she said, this was partially my choice. I wanted it to be in Spanish because I don't need to hear the words. I feel the emotions. Mm -hmm. 
Which is very sweet, but logically and dateline wise, I think you better make sure there are not clauses in those vows that you are agreeing to that they could slip in anything in Spanish. And she went, no, it could be like, say I do if you agree to join my cult where we drink tiger's blood and pray to Urkel from Family Matters. And she'd be like, I do. I don't, Urkel, what does that mean? I don't know, but it's about love and it's beautiful. It could be what, anything. What a current reference. Um, Thank you. Urkel. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. The um, dad is in those commercials. So I feel like it's still fresh. Um, she could I be think saying anything, I, though. I, you agree to be in the thruple with no, but I don't think from it's other binding. casts of the show. No, it's not. A, it's not a legal agreement. I think you could just say, "I do love and obey." Listen, I agree to love and obey my husband, but I'm not obeying him for shit. So. Oh no, that yeah. was you. Yeah, I can't see you doing that at all. So, but actually, I'm kidding. I made sure that that was not in our vows. I said it specifically. I don't want to say obey, and they said yeah. it's not in the vows anymore. How old are you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they don't put that in the vows anymore. Not in the vows, <laughs> it's like, it's not at my church. It in my church, it wasn't. They took I it love out. That. Yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, so Jamie tearfully reads her vows in Spanish, and she says, "I'll translate for you later. Not now. You'll find out later. Yeah. And, You'll find out later uh, what you just agreed to, right? Exactly. And Chris does her vows in English. They're both very sweet. Um, they just love each other like a lot. And mm, I don't know. I don't know. If they, I don't know if they do. I don't know They're if they crying. love each other. Yeah, I know. They might be in that honeymoon stage that is yeah. their first big lesbian relationship that finally yeah. gets to be out in the open and after having relationships they didn't even want to be in. So, yeah, yeah. they might be in that euphoric early stage still. Yeah. But yeah, they got it's... through the eight and a half days in bed and Jamie's That's... still on board. Barely. She's barely hanging on. Barely. And then I think what we're from what we've seen from the previous, Chris goes back to Alabama and doesn't come back. So yeah, I'm, I'm worried about that. I'm very, I'm very worried, worried, worried so, yeah, about this, that. I probably I'm, I'm I'm basing my opinion on what I've seen from the previews. Yeah. So I should probably not do that. But based on this, they seem very in love. They do. And I thought it was very sweet. The family is like a little teary on the Zoom call and the gays that are sitting there are like do we have to get back to work? Uh, do we have to clear away chairs? Uh, I mean, but they, they seem like, happy. Yeah, they're the two of them sitting there, and they had already that's, worked. They worked it. the event, then they were the guest, and now they have to do the breakdown because there's no other people that she doesn't have any other friends. Is that why? What? Why is that? Did this? Did they just pick such a small venue, or for the show they only had? I don't know why. It, it seems like she could have scrounged up two more friends. Just two more. Just two because the, the two gay guys are sitting on one side of a table. There are two other chairs. You just put somebody else there. I don't know. They had, they had, I think they had at least four more slots that were yeah. not taken. Yeah. Uh, so they uh, – the cutest part I thought was when Jamie sees Chris's family on the Zoom – and she's mm -hmm. kind of like, hi, you know, we're all family you now. And she's she's so excited. And she's kind of rambling how this is reality. This is a dream. It's like everything. She's just, she's very excited. But Mary Jane she's a, is bitter and thinks it won't last. So. No, I know it won't last. But um, <laughs> I do like to look at Jamie. I think she's very pretty. She's yeah. so pretty. Yeah. She's so pretty. And I think Chris is very pretty when she puts herself together. Um. Okay. In her like interviews, when her hair looks yeah. very clean and glossy, and she has her makeup done and stuff. Uh huh. Um, she looked pretty on her wedding day. That's for sure. Yes. So next time. Ooh, next time. The most exciting thing that I think I think I honestly I'm more excited about this than about the next episode of Yellow Jackets. Okay. Osama is going to read a poem that he wrote about Debbie. In front of a group of people. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. Mm. I can't Dibby. wait. Dibby, Dibby. my you, son. Son. You are my son. Vitamins the, from the sun. What was you get the warmth <laughs> from the sun, which makes you my Dibby. Yeah. <laughs> what are these people's reactions going to be? I cannot wait for some side reaction shots. Of are they family members? Right. Or is he are he's friends? introducing they, her? Yeah. Do they have, have they already known about Debbie and her age? 
I'm do I'm they know about excited. the did they know about the darkness in him? Right. Yeah. <laughs> are they just happy to have him, you know, married off to someone because of that darkness? They're like, we can't mm-hmm. trust him with a local girl because he no. has the darkness. <laughs> Let's feed the Americans to him in the dark. He's just like Muck Mood, the village idiot. We're so happy yeah. somebody's going to take him off our hands. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. yes. <laughs> like um, the beekeeper, Marcel. Who- no, his name is not Marcel. His name is... Um- Marcel, right? Marcel, M-U-R- sorry. M-U-R-S-E-L, Marcel. Yeah. Marcel. Marcel and Anna. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so Chris and Jamie have decided – now we know why they've rushed through the wedding because they have career plans that are going to be fun for us to watch. They are buying a food truck and mm-hmm. starting a business together, which is sure. always great when you've just gotten married. Um, yeah. And they see a zombie one, like a zombie themed one or something horror, which Jamie's going to freaking hate, but Chris is going to love. And it's $20,000. So they're very, I don't know how they're affording this, but do either of them cook? uh, I've, we've never heard that either one of them are some amazing chef. I mean, she isn't, um, Jamie is like a paralegal and Chris was a narcoleptic security guard. Right. Like, (laughs) yes. I know. I didn't know they cooked. So it could be fun. It could be like watching Food Truck Race meets 90 Day Fiance. And I'm down for it. show, but it sounds great. Yeah. (laughs) It's been on forever. It's like literally food truck competition about a bunch of food trucks that are like trying to get their start. It's on Food Network. Okay. Okay. I think it's fun. So uh, Nicole finds a friend in Egypt. I didn't even think she'd be allowed to have a friend. So, well, I don't think it, I don't think she's going to be allowed to keep the friend. No, she's allowed <laughs> to meet the friend for coffee once, and yeah. then Mahmoud heard that the friend had some hot takes about how Muslim guys are controlling, and mm-hmm. he does not think she should keep the friend. He does no. not. Maybe my love, you never see her again. Maybe she turns up dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's how I, was I heard wrong it. The whole time about the Dateline. I thought the Dateline would be Nicole and Mahmoud. It's Mahmoud and Nicole's friend. Yeah. The Dateline. Yeah. She, she's going to disappear. Yeah. 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 Uh, Danielle and Johan are still fighting about seeing her ex. How long are they going to drag this out? How long are they going to drag this relationship out? Two episodes because we see that he says to the friend, you know, Danielle likes a big penis. Do you have a big penis to that yeah. guy? Yeah. Just pretty funny. It's, it's, honestly doesn't bother me again because she brought i'm gonna say it again we have the receipts danielle you are the one who started talking about the size of his penis mm-hmm. on national tv yeah. so yeah. now you're gonna be a prude about it okay yeah. yeah uh gabe talks to the dad again and asks for permission to marry isabel and the dad is speechless again the dad is always he- speechless yeah, he's speechless a lot. He says, no palabra, something, something. And I was like, oh, I guess that means speechless. We've heard it so many times now. I know oh, what it means. Um, yeah. And so they leave us on another cliffhanger with that. What's he going to say? The mom had already said, wait. So I don't know what the dad's going to I say. think that it's like what you said. Like they are so happy that they're trying to make there seem to be dramatic storylines with them. Like mm-hmm. about the, is he going to get the surgery? Is he going to find the fabric for the pants or whatever? Right. But it's not, there's nothing with them because they're just genuinely good a happy, wonder, wonderful couple, good people. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Uh, and then Jen and Rishi reunite and she asks him about the towel photo. And for some reason, they are both wearing towels at that point and they are in a gym shower or a spa, yeah. a sauna, something. Yeah. Unfair. I wonder if they've been to like one of those bath places where they bathe you and st- or something like that. Yes. They've gone for a spa treatment. And, and then she's, she's like, like hey. speaking of towels. Speaking of you and a towel looking hot, <laughs> I got to get that picture back for my sister-in-law. God knows what she's doing with it. She's so horny. <laughs> uh, uh, and what is these? What, on social media and be like, why are, are you not getting any? What's going on? What's happening on the farm? Does, what does he say? Does he say like, is, I can't remember what he says. He says like, it's no big deal or, oh, I had to send it. I just send I them. Mean, they just, just they ask them. for a photo. I just send it. Like, it's like a regular thing that he does. Like, it's to a fan or something. Like, he wasn't also discussing meeting up with this person. Well, she said she was a model. So maybe he's like, hey, let me show you how the mod- modeling industry is in Jaipur. Yeah. 
And he already has that one platonic friend who also <laughs> would not touch him with a 10 foot pole because she knows that he's doing stuff. And he disappears at the club. He disappears. And so she's concerned about catching an STD. So yeah. she doesn't. I just, I'm I'm suspicious now of Rishi more than I was. Because at the beginning, I really thought he was very loyal to Jen. But and I was foolish, I think. And I think he might be up to some shenanigans. I think he's up to shenanigans too. But I still believe in their love. Okay. That's beautiful. Okay. That's beautiful. I think it's been, he hasn't seen her in two years. And, you know. Yeah. He he is the hottest guy in this town with the only person with the curly hair. So yeah, the hour and a half hair regimen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think you know he's out there doing his thing. But now that she's back, he's going to be loyal to her. Now that she's there. Mm-hmm. I sound like I'm making excuses for him, and I don't mean to. Be. Out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> That's right. But when right. you're here, you're my girlfriend. Yeah. That's right. And I'm not going to tell my parents either. No. Well. Thank you very much for doing that recap. That was amazing. You are so welcome. And I'm really... sure you're going to get a lot of comments. Bring back Mary Payne. <laughs> <laughs> Who does Kimberly think she is? Uh, no hot takes from Kimberly. Listen, <laughs> you guys, if you want to do something nice, you can head over to uh, Apple Reviews and, and give a nice review to counteract the one that called me a <laughs> wine box communist, <laughs> which is... That's and Anne one. felt bad for your husband. Oh, for being yeah. married to you. Feel bad for me. He's walking <laughs> around here in a neck brace. You know what's so funny? They filmed the movie um, "Weekend at Bernie's" here on Baltic Island, and um, as for some reason, my husband didn't know that. So they have a new T-shirt at one of the stores that says like "Weekend at Baltic," but it's that font, like that eighties oh, font, uh-huh. you know. And so I. I said, he goes, oh, this is, we go into the same t-shirt store. It's bald head blues. And they make like a, one new design every year. And, you know, so we went in and my husband goes, oh, this is like a new design. She goes, oh yeah. He just did that special because of the anniversary of the movie. I was like, oh, fun. My husband looks at me and goes, what movie? I go, they filmed Weekend at Bernie's here. He's like, what? He didn't know. They come over on the ferry and they've got him on the and beach then, where they're lifting his hand up and everything. Pretending were Bernie's you the alive. judgmental person who's on Twitter going, these girls don't know where Everest is rolling your eyes or were you nice right. about it? Uh, I was nice about it because how would he know that? Okay. <laughs> it wasn't was like, like yeah. you didn't know that? God. And then, of course, my son's like, what's that? I was like, it's a movie from the 80s. Oh. It's like about a dead guy. They prop up and pretend he's alive the whole time. It's hilarious. It was a different time. You could it do was, things like that. It was corpse abuse. It was fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Well, everybody, uh, make sure you go over and follow Kimberly and Katie at Date Dateline or wherever you get your podcast. And if you're into Yellow Jackets, go find them on YouTube. And it's called A Date with K&K. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that it's where you could subscribe and then you'll get notified as I did last night or two nights ago, whenever it was about your Sunday night live discussion of Yellow Jackets episode by episode. Yeah, it's really and you can still go, But you can still go look at it afterwards. Like you don't have. To oh, watch yeah. Live, most right? reviews yeah. come afterwards. Yeah. It, does the chat still go? If you're if you does the chat go? I think you can read the chat. But you uh-huh. can make you can comment in the comment section instead of the chat section. So it's you can still comment and leave your theories, and I'll respond. It's just okay. in the, the comment section instead of like the ongoing chat live. Yeah, chat. I just didn't know if you yeah. watched something later if the chat was still there, like as it's you know what I mean, as if it's recorded as well. I think you can, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I can't confirm more than that. I'm not. I'm not a I'm YouTuber, not that, so I don't. Yeah. I don't know these things. Okay. And guys, please follow us on Instagram at pink shade pod at Twitter at pink shade pod at TikTok at pink shade podcast. And uh, that's where we are. And I'll see you later this week. I'm going to have Ryan Bailey on to talk about real housewife, ultimate girls trip season three, episode three. Yeah. And we'll do a little Bravo breakdown. I I will tell him you said, I love him too. Okay. Bye. Bye.